Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. I am really excited because Google announced Gemini 2.0 today. And there's a very lengthy blog post, but what we're going to do is dive right into Google AI Studio today, play around with it, and talk about why it's so exciting for developers like you and I. Now let's begin with what actually got announced and what's available. Gemini is Google's LLM. It competes with Claude, it competes with GPT, and 2.0 is just their latest series, much like a jump from GPT-3 to 4. Uh, they have gone from 1.5 to 2, and there are some significant changes and improvements. Google AI Studio is available online for anyone with a Google account. You can just go to aistudio.google.com. And this is really a playground more for developers, but even regular people can boot this up and you can just start having a chatbot conversation for free with the latest models. Now, Gemini 2.0 Flash is their smaller model, lower tier, meant to be really cheap, really quick. And what's impressive is that Gemini 2.0 Flash, even though it's smaller and cheaper, is uh, able to uh, compete very competitively with even larger models like GPT-4 um, and if you believe the benchmarks, which frankly, after some testing, I'm highly skeptical of uh, O1 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. That means that Google claims it will be very competitive with the best and largest models on the market. I would not go that far personally after some minor testing. Um, but nevertheless, it is much faster. So uh, you boot up Google AI Studio, you click Create Prompt, and then you can have your good old fashioned Gemini 1.5. But of course, we're looking at Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental. And so um, I'm just going to say, you know, hello, Gemini. How are you doing? And of course, you have your standard response, and this looks perfectly fine. Um, Gemini Flash tends to be quite fast, and we'll talk about why this is really useful later, but in the, in the meantime, just know that you're getting your responses fairly quick. Can you tell me 10 jokes? And you can see it, it outputs very, very quickly, whereas if you were using GPT-4, uh, it might be a bit slower and slower than your reading speed. Uh, another trait that was already true with Gemini 1.5 is that the token count is absolutely massive. You can dump a 100-page, 200-page book or PDF into these models, and it will work just fine without a hitch um, and, and continue outputting just fine, whereas other models tend to have much smaller token counts, so you're stuck at, you know, the 50-page mark, or if you go far back enough or cheap enough, you may be stuck at the 10-page limit before you can't even really uh, make sense of what was said in the first page. None of this should be surprising. It's a functional LLM. What's fun is that Gemini 2.0 is now multimodal. Now, um, that means that you can do really cool things like this. Now, I have a video where I'm scrolling through a bunch of different symbols and text. Uh, if you watched one of my earlier videos where we were building a hieroglyph app, uh, this was a step necessary. And so, uh, if I just run this, it is parsing through this video. Oh, uh, this was not a good demonstration because I chose the wrong one. Let's come back and rerun with Gemini 2.0 Flash. Um, it is going to list out all of these symbols and all of the Gardner codes. So I've asked it to watch a video and it has done a great job. Um, I am just eyeballing this and it looks accurate. Uh, like. I, I can't say for certain eyeballing that it's perfectly accurate, but none of these symbols seem out of place to me just from what I know, and uh, it all follows the same format. So uh, it's looking pretty good. 
Am I going to say it hasn't hallucinated? Probably, it probably hasn't, but I'm not going to rule that out. I have done this previously with a number of videos and they have all checked out very, very well. Uh, there's a few places where these videos weren't captured very good and scrolled quickly, uh, but none of them was hallucinated. That is just one example. I can pull in pictures, graphs, images, uh, screenshots, whatever, and have a good sense of what is in here. That's just the beginning. If we look at the starter apps, um, Google, and I'm just going to say this now, it's going to get more and more impressive as we go through this video. Gemini uh, has a number of starter apps that was very useful. Um, spatial understanding is something that I don't care a whole lot about. Um, I don't use a lot of because I don't deal with images all that uh, all that often. But um, part of what Google has said is uh, finding bounding boxes of different things, and so. Uh, can you, oh, sorry, show me the position of uh, the shadows, uh, the shadow of the cheese. And so this was a demonstration within uh, Gemini's announcement post that's very impressive because you're not just identifying some random items like cheese, you have to have somewhat of a two-step. You got to identify the cheese and then you got to figure out what the shadow is. And hopefully... Uh, it is able to do the bounding box, which is not accurate. Um, let's go with the shadow of the fox. And we will try this. So it has to recognize that this is the fox and this matches the shape of the fox. Again, kind of cool doesn't affect me too much. Uh, we're seeing different kind of spatial awareness and that's really where it's demonstrating 3D bounding boxes out of my domain, but very impressive nonetheless. Similarly, you know, dealing with video and Map Explorer. What I really appreciate about Google AI Studio is that now it is um, giving out what was promised, I think, six months ago by both OpenAI and Google, available to developers now. Um, this real-time streaming isn't available in terms of code, so I didn't see any easy way to uh, use the API and find the code and figure out how to build this. But as a demonstration, it's very impressive. And so, for example, um, I'm going to talk to Gemini right here. Again, we, we're starting to see this already, so this is less impressive. Hey, Gemini, can you tell me a joke? Because they make up everything. Sorry, uh, I had my computer muted for a moment there, but uh, let's... Let's uh, ask a question in another language. Bonjour, vous êtes bien? Oui, je vais bien, merci. Parlez-vous français? Not exactly what that means, but, um, you know, it can switch languages, all of that. That's been available already. What's really nice is that you can start grounding. So if I, sorry, disconnect clear chat is that you could start using all of the built-in tools. Now this live API is able to do Google searches on the fly while answering your questions. Not so impressive. We're kind of seeing that if you're a paid customer of ChatGPT anyways. What I thought was super duper cool, and let me see if I can... Um, Turn on something here uh, on the side. Okay, uh, I am going to share. Okay, I understand. Please share when you're ready. Hey, 
Gemini. Um, what is it I'm looking at in my screen right now? Certainly, the screen you're showing displays the output of a program called Scricobi, which is running on your computer. It appears that this program is used to mirror or control an Android device, in this case a Pixel 8 Pro, over a network connection. The logs shown include details about the connection and... Okay, the okay, transit. stop. Um, can you tell me what TCP port I'm using? Certainly. According to the information displayed on your screen, the TCP port being used is 39,799. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so you can see that uh, it's building on this multiple steps now. Um, Google is so, so close to building out uh, what Anthropic had done, which was that functional tool use, computer use kind of application where uh, it would send screenshots to uh, Claude. Claude would interact with your computer. It's a very simple to imagine building a couple of functions that would allow Gemini to start clicking things on your computer. Now this doesn't do it, but it has been extremely accurate in seeing my screen, knowing what's on it, understanding what the task is. And we could very easily create a couple functions that give it the ability to interact with my computer. This is where Gemini 2.0 Flash is so important. It is because Gemini has is a small model, very low latency, that you can have fairly immediate responses. Whereas when we were looking at computer use with Anthropic, everything took an eternity. Anthropic would say, okay, it would take five seconds for it to make a click, another five seconds for it to kind of respond and tell you what it did, and then it goes on. Like if you're browsing the web, every time you click something, it takes five, 10 seconds. Um, you'll never find your information in a short amount of time, whereas Gemini has uh, repeatedly shown just how quick and, and how readily available it is. And so I think for developers, um, number one, if we talk about just regular prompting, um, Gemini 2.0 just deals with the cost. I don't think that's going to change all that much. Yes, it might make it a bit more accessible, but uh, text generation was not that expensive and not that slow to begin with. Where Gemini 2.0 is really starting to get impressive is dealing with audio, dealing with video, dealing with um, function calling all in very, very quick low latency responses. And you'll notice that even when I say low latency, it's still in the order of you know one or two seconds, but Google is really driving this down. And it's interesting because their philosophy is so different. Uh, OpenAI and Claude are just trying to be the best and things are taking longer and longer. If you think about O1, it takes you know, 60 seconds for a response for it to kind of parse through and think through the problem. And that has some domain of usage. If I need to ask to do deep critical research and hopefully it gets good enough to do so, no problem. But for day-to-day -day tasks, Google is trying to corner the market here by being quick, being cheap, being fast, and being reasonably competent. And so I don't need the best most well-written poetry in the world. I just need it fast. I don't need the best, um, most well-articulated answer. I just need an answer very quickly. Go on Google, find me the answer, tell me. Um, so coming back to this, uh, Gemini 2.0 Flash is available. Um, you could start building a few of these things into it. Uh, you can get the code right away. Um, it, on the surface, it doesn't look all that different from 1.5. In fact, the code is very similar. So if you're building chatbots, this will be just fine. Uh, the moment it got announced, I did a couple tests and I already uh, shipped out uh, a few 
different um, changes to to my code bases because Gemini 2.0 Flash was pretty clearly better than 1.5 Flash. And so it was easy to change existing products and swapping it over. What will be interesting and what is going to be in the back of my mind, and if you're watching this and you have ideas, throw it into the comments, is what are we going to do with all of these things? Audio, video, um, spatial recognition. That was never in my thought process, but uh, Google, for example, showed off an AI suggesting and understanding what's happening in a video game, Clash of Clans. Uh, I don't think that's the most lucrative or best use case, but, um, you know, I... I guess why I'm so excited is because this opens a whole new set of doors. We spent two years trying to figure out how to build good chatbot applications. I think we're getting really, really good at it. I am, you know, using a lot of tools at work to dissect and to analyze, to ask questions, to categorize different documents. Like we're getting really good at that and we figured out a lot of good use cases. And now two years down the line, we are facing this all over again what's going to happen what can we do now and um and i don't have an answer for that <laughs> i don't know what's a good idea but uh, maybe gemini 2.0 flash is cheap enough that i can just keep having this conversation with ai while you know i am reading documents on the side i can just stream real time the document and talk to Gemini and just say, what's your opinion on this? Where should I make changes? Um, who knows? Anyways, uh, I hope that was a good quick introduction for Gemini 2.0 and why I'm excited. There are other facets to it. Uh, Gemini 2.0 having uh, function calling and grounding all built in is a very big deal for agent AI agents. I just don't think they're there yet for a lot of use cases. But for me, the speed, the latency, the the new domains with multimodal processing is going to be pretty critical in the next little while because even from this demonstration right here, you can see it is fully capable of many, many, many tasks. Okay, I will leave it at that, and maybe next week we can start building something with um, 2.0 Flash. Uh, when 2.0 Pro uh, comes out, we'll have a whole new discussion as well. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.